Okay, that's my memory card acting up. I've got about, it says I'm out of uh, recording space, but I found out the last two days that I've actually got another 10 to 15 minutes left, and I think I can get this finished. Although it'll be, uh, I can't join memory cards together right now. Having trouble with a, a converter and then using Movie Maker and this and that. Uh, I, I know how to do it, but it's rejecting, I, I think it's the memory card. But anyway, let me finish up. The book's so big, it's still loading as I start. And then all of a sudden, it'll just skip and move as other parts uh, are loaded on. Okay, here's chapter 10 again, so I'm getting there. Other peoples number with me. Their life blood bespattered my garments. His people. Okay, now I see that's going out. Oh, I'm so close with. Oh, there it goes. Um, this is a reference to the other destruction of the land of Israel of Malachi 3, if the purpose of Elijah does not prosper, if the temple's not built, build it, never defeat it. Don't build it, God's creation is going to destroy Israel someday. And he says, when I come, I am going to, if Elijah's not successful, I am going to destroy the land of Israel. Um, but he means his creation is going to. That's what, here's the definition of God by God. Absolute power, absolute knowledge, and he is his creation. Utter destruction, that's how he says it. The Lord coming from Adam is mentioned by many other prophets in the Bible. And I have a video on it. It's very interesting. Uh, it's called The Day of the Lord. And uh, there's about seven prophets who had their version of The Day of the Lord, but it's finalized in Malachi 3 and completely changed. Completely changed. And there's... there's um, no room for a messianic area in it, that's for sure. That Rambam made up, including world exaltation of the Jewish people by Christianity, by Islam, and all the other gentles, Gentiles of the earth. <laughs> Never gonna happen, people. You think you can get two billion Christians to disavow Jesus? I say good luck to you, and better luck to you if you come to try to get two billion Muslims to disavow Allah as they know him. Allah means God, but it's God as they know him, as, and as opposed to the God of Israel. The Lord coming from Adam, okay, it's mentioned by many of the prophets. The Lord was not allowed to pass through Edom in the Exodus with Moses and the Jewish people. This is an event yet to occur. He's going to pass through, he's going to pass from Texas to Israel. Gentile land with a prophet like Moses. 
Yeah, they well, Moses, he's in Moses, just like him. Moses is a man of divine things. I can give you three or four references in, uh, uh, I guess it's Exodus, but in the Torah. And Moses is also a man of divine beings, and of course he can hear God speak. And that immediately makes you a man of divine beings. Divine beings being God and the angel of God's presence, the Holy Spirit. Uh, but they, they, they just said no to the Exodus of Moses. And so if Moses doesn't go through, neither does God. And it's the same thing with God saying, uh, I walked amongst the tents of the Israelis, of the Israelites. Uh, well, he went by, but Moses was doing the walking. He just happened to be in, within him, as he is within me. And he also fills this room. Any room I go to, the presence of God and the presence of the angel of his presence fills the room. There's a difference, though. If you're sitting in uh, uh, pews, audience, uh, <laughs> folding chairs, if you're in that room, this presence of both of those divine beings surrounds you. From head to toe, it, they, it just surrounds you. You are in the presence of God. And with me, the difference is they flow through me. I mean, they've got actual contact with my spirit. You know, and, and the divine beings are the Shekinah, God's presence, and uh, the presence of the angel of his presence. They make up the Shekinah, and so in a sense, I am part of it. Now, this is no trinity or anything like that. Believe me, I'm an old man on a totem pole. Uh, God doesn't do any special favors for me. Now, he's done some good things. I mean, he, he'll make sure I get exercise and I eat good. Lately, I've been eating too good. Time, time to slim down a little bit. But uh, this is an event yet to occur. The interpretation of this prophecy is that the prophet like Moses with God, as God was with Moses in the Exodus, will come from Adam, Texas, Gentile lands. In the Christian world of the Jewish people, none are with God. He comes with the Gentile from the Christian world. And that Gentile is God's righteous servant, Moshiach, who God specifically describes for the day of the Lord. He's got to have a representation. He's got to have a man he can talk to and say, go tell the Jewish people this. Tell them, this is where I want my temple. Tell them I am working on the specifications of what it is to look like. Which means I'll be typing again. <laughs> Who God specifically describes for the day of the Lord. That's Isaiah 53, it's what it's for. He is God's visible representation and speaker and writer of his words as Moses was. He is the prophet like Moses. God says he will put his words in his mouth and he will speak to the Jewish people all that God commands him. Again, he controls my mind. He decides what comes out of here. Not me. And no self will. I'm not like any other man on this planet now. You know, you have to figure when God returned, there was going to be some changes. Now, you all been taught about Messianic era, the world's going to love you. Now, what happens to never again, never forget? What about the Jews who say, I don't have to worry about that stuff and hold the cost anymore? The world's going to love us. That's what my rabbi says. That's what Tovia says. That's what Jews for Judaism says and Michael Scoback. Well, how about Malachi 3? And the creation brings utter destruction to the land. You got 7 million Israeli Jews right now. You think utter destruction might take out another six? It sure should ring a bell. That's all that should be taught by these rabbis of teaching man's word over God's. Never defeated it again. Build a temple. Don't build a temple. Utter destruction by God's creation. And find Elijah. Why are you looking for Moshe? Elijah is the one that clears the way. Rambam even said, we don't know if 
David comes before Elijah or Elijah comes before him. He said, we cannot tell from what the prophets say. So let's go study Torah instead. Well, the fact is, they're one and the same person. Moshe, uh, the righteous servant, makes so many righteous, he's one of them. Elijah's supposed to recancel the family members through Judaism and the amendment, the amendment to the new covenant, to the covenant by the new covenant of Jeremiah 31. Now, Moshe raised the money uh, and the materials for the first temple. Solomon had it built, but David was, he pulled all the resources together for the most part. You know, it took Solomon longer to build his own home than it took to build the first temple. <laughs> I think it was 10 years, uh, his house was 12 years. I would have liked to have seen that. And here's God. This is what I talk about the need to convert. I will raise up a prophet for them. He's talking to Moses. From among their own people. Okay, see, I don't fit that part. But like God said, it doesn't even matter. I mean, you're writing my words. You are a prophet like Moses. And just disregard this if you want to. Or we can convert uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, Orthodox. You know, I, I, I don't know what will actually happen. I, they don't tell me anything of the future. If I can't figure something out of my own, I don't get to know. He would never tell me what another person is thinking or what they're doing because I couldn't know of my own. You know, and I still have to live the human experience, he calls it. And I'm like, why? I'm not as far from the human experience as you can get. But, they may, but what it does is I still feel like key. They'll still have me lose stuff and, you know, make mistakes. He'll, he'll have something type that when I'm proofing and I go, hey, 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 this ain't right. And it's really just to, something that small, just to get emotion from me. You know, it's part of the five refinement, refinement where he, this is what he told Ezekiel. Ezekiel, they're not going to listen to you. They don't listen to me. He said, but I'm going to make your forehead, your face like adamant, harder than flint. He's going to toughen him up. And do not be this. Made by my people. That's a reference to emotional pain. Do not be dismayed by them. And that's what is being done in God's boot camp, his fire of refinement. Constantly pulling out emotions to the extent that after 16 years, I almost don't have any. I mean, I could, I could still get angry, but it doesn't feel on the inside like my getting angry years ago would feel like. Totally different. It's just like cool as a cucumber, but I can still spit it out. You know, I can, I can get going still. He will raise up a prophet for them from among their own people like yourself. I will put my words in his mouth, and he will speak to them all that I command him. Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verse 18. Okay, next one is uh, chapter 11. Torah, written on every heart, which I kind of just talked about in this one. Thank you very much for listening. Tell all your friends who can believe what we have heard. We think it's him. He's got proofs from God that are undeniable. If it's not him, who can it possibly ever be? You know, there's no miracles to come. I'm not going to make the blind see, the lame walk, the crippled walk, and those with disfigurements uh, not disfigured. That's, been, that's afflicted by God. And again, the Jewish people have never been afflicted by God. Jesus most certainly was not afflicted by God because if he had, that's what you have. It had to be every single Jew, either blind, crippled, lame, or disfigured. And that just never happened. No, he built 53 so it can only fit me. And notice, it's a Gentile being described in 53 when you read the other verses, like Isaiah 63 coming from Adam. Jesus is a Jew. He cannot be the man of Isaiah 53. 
he cannot be the anointed one of Isaiah 11 because he doesn't come from the stump of Jesse. Now he comes from the failed ancestral tree of the kings of Judah that was banished when they lost the temple. I guess that was the second temple by the Babylonians. And the Assyrians had defeated the northern kingdom and imported Gentiles. So when the exiles, all 13 tribes, and I've got a great video on that, it gets a lot of attention. Um, they had to go to Judah, but that's where Cyrus, the declaration said to go, go to Jerusalem, build the temple. And uh, you of all his people, that's how he declared it. And he was, uh, he was a Gentile, and he was anointed. He was an anointed one, and, uh, so, and Elijah, he's a Gentile. Elijah the Tishbite, and inhabitant of Ramoth Gilead. That's east of the River Jordan, and it's Arab land. That's why Elijah was an Arab. There's no Tishbites. In any of the tribes, and when clans are mentioned, you'll never find Tishbite, and God is just screaming it at you. Elijah the Tishbite, Elijah the Tishbite, who lives in Arab land. That's what he's saying to you every time. He, crafty, I'm telling you, you got to be on your toes when you're reading things God writes. He's always got an agenda. He says, I always have... For every sentence, I've got one, two, or three purposes, and sometimes four. You gotta watch him like a hog. Thank you for listening and watching.